We will discuss in more detail the most important integral transform for us, which is the Fourier integral transform. As said before, these are generalizations of the discrete case. So n equals minus infinity to plus infinity of Cn e to the i n x is the complex version of a Fourier transform and from that we get the coefficient Cn equals 1 over 2 pi. So these functions are defined from minus pi to pi with a periodicity of 2 pi of the integral from minus pi to pi of f of x e to the minus i n x. What would the generalization of this be in the integral transform language? Now the variable n becomes a continuous variable and you're not summing anymore. Continuous variables have to be integrated. So the generalization of this is the integral from n is still like alpha. So it's going to be from minus infinity to infinity. And instead of c of n, you're going to get some function known as g of alpha because alpha is now your n. The same e to the i n x except with alpha instead of n. And now you have to integrate just as you sum over alpha the integration is over sum of, summing over n is the same as the integral over alpha. So that is the complete an analog of the regular complex Fourier series. And what would the way of extracting the function g of alpha b. So g of alpha is just like c of n. Well, you have to got, have a new normalization factor. And this is the only place where we connect up this minus pi to pi with the previous incarnation of the same thing. So you still get 1 over 2 pi as though it's still remembering its humble origins as a discrete object. But the integral still goes from minus infinity to infinity over the entire range of the variable t. So now uh, that, uh, I forgot, forgot to write dx here. So here I get e to the minus i alpha t dt. If you integrate out the x, you get the n's surviving. Here if you integrate out the t's, you get the alpha surviving. The 1 over 2 pi is the only thing that connects the old version and the new version. Now similarly for even and odds, you're going to get the uh, even cosine transform and the, the sine transform if a function is even or the function is odd. It's not terribly important for my um, developments, but I'll give those formulas to you anyway. If I have a even function, then the cosine transform is got by writing fcx equals the square root of 2 over pi. The normalizations become a little nasty, that's all. Integral 0 to infinity of g cosine alpha. And instead of e to the i alpha x, I'm going to just simply get cosine alpha x d alpha. And the corresponding coefficients gc alpha are got by reverse transforming it. So that would be the Fourier transform of by the way, I should have written this as the Fourier trans integral transform of f. So this will be the integral transform of fc. And that will be the square root of 2 over pi again, integral from 0 to infinity. Notice that you just go from 0 to infinity now. You don't go from the entire negative infinity to positive infinity because you've chosen the Fourier extension, the, the odd extension or the even extension. For the odd function, you get the so-called Fourier sine transform, fsx, and that's going to be the square root of 2 over pi, which is the integral from 0 to infinity. All I'm doing is replacing s with the cosine symbol with the s symbol and the uh, cosine with a sine. And then the corresponding functions, gs, alpha would be the Fourier integral transform of f sub s and word for word it's the same thing. <laughs> now
Now, I should give you maybe a couple of, uh, I will be doing a detailed example of a Fourier transform in the next video. So maybe I should spend some time discussing these really ugly normalization factors that you're getting here. In the mathematical literature, this is considered acceptable. Physicists don't care for the fact that when you're not talking about the even or odd transform, you're getting 1 over 2 pi here, nothing here. And when you're talking about the even and the odd transforms, you're getting the square root of 2 over pi in both these things. So that strikes physicists and chemists as a very odd type of deal. So in the scientific literature, especially in the physics community, uh, you use the following normalization. So what we're going to do is f of x we're going to define as 1 over square root of 2 pi. In other words, we are distributing the burden. Here you get 1 over 2 pi, here you get nothing. Here you get square root of 2 over pi, that's square root of 2 over pi. So it's, it seems more equitable in these cases. We want to make it equitable over there also. And you do that by defining your series a little bit differently. If you do that, then g of alpha turns out to also be 1 over root 2 pi, the integral from minus infinity to infinity, f of t e to the minus i alpha t dt. Uh, this is the normalization used in quantum mechanics. Here's a little secret. Alpha in quantum mechanics is momentum. P. Momentum is a vector, so in quantum mechanics you would actually write this as f of r equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi, integral from minus infinity to infinity, and that's going to be g of some momentum p, e to the i p dot r, because that's the only way you can mate two vectors to form a number, d cubed p, and here I'm maybe taking a little bit further than I'm supposed to because, uh, well, this is a graduate course. I can do whatever I want, right? So this is going to be d cubed p, and that's going to be over all the momentum volume. So that's a three-dimensional integral from minus infinity to plus infinity in the px direction minus infinity to plus infinity in the py direction and minus infinity to plus infinity in the in the pz direction. So it's over all the momentum volumes. And if you are sensible, you'll probably go to spherical coordinates or something like that in a specific problem. So that's the way it's done in quantum mechanics. And you can find g of p by inverting it just like that. So g of p would be the 1 over root 2 pi, the integral from minus infinity to infinity. And now this is the space volume of f of r e to the negative i p dot r d cubed r. Okay, so that's how the business is conducted in those subjects. Now in uh, quantum field theory, most quantum field theorists use whatever the uh, came naturally to them when they were studying quantum mechanics. So that's most of most people would use that. But uh, my mentor, uh, Cecil Devitt, the legendary mathematical physicist from uh, UT Austin, uh, later on she got the Legion d'honneur from the French government, it's the highest award, civilian award given by the French government. And she worked her entire life in path integrals. And for her, this kind of thing was bread and but butter. So she did not even like the 1 over square root of 2 pi. She was telling us how she was trying very hard to get the physics literature to stop putting the 1 over square root of 2 pi. And she actually invented the following symbol known as I slash. It's a great, it's a great uh, joke in physics. To, it's a, uh, it reveals a great sense of humor to come up with something like this. This comes from the a traditional h-bar in quantum mechanics, which is sometimes called the reduced Planck constant. 
because you're reducing the Planck's constant by a factor of 2 pi. Uh, the reduced Planck's constant has got a great utility in physics because h is about 6.6 .6 or something like that and 2 pi is also the same thing. So this is just 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. So that makes uh, 10 to the minus 34, you don't have to remember any of those 6.6 uh, .6 stuff in front of the uh, 10 to the minus 34. That's the beauty of writing h bar in all your formulas. So she invented a <laughs> symbol known as the complex, reduced complex constant, the reduced complex number i bar. So this has reduced square root of unity. And when I learned about this notation, I was tickled pink. I learned it from her book, Analysis Manifolds in Physics. Beautiful two-volume work of the highest levels of mathematics, like topology, differential geometry, and things like that. So um, in this normalization, no constants at all. f of x is the integral from minus infinity to infinity g of alpha e to the i slash alpha x d alpha and then g of alpha is integral negative alpha infinity to infinity f of t e to the minus i slash alpha t dt. The only champion of this notation, unfortunately, was her husband, Bryce Divitt, and in many of his works, he went out of his way to try to promote this I slash notation. I don't think it caught on very well. <laughs> the physics community is highly resistant to any kind of change, and if you change the physics community, you have to change a bunch of other communities at the same time, because everybody works these days in more than one discipline. So uh, I don't know. I don't think it really caught on, but it's a wonderful way of E uh, making this equal opportunity with no normalizations or anything of that sort, 